Now that you guys have some experience with pointers, let's look at some more applications. And now we're going to visit an old function that we saw before, and it's the exchange function. So on the screen, I have the code, and I told you that this doesn't work because we're doing pass by value. So this time, we are going to solve this through pass by reference. So on the right, okay, is the new code for exchange. So I made some very small changes. So instead of taking in int, we're taking int pointers for both of them. And then all these symbols, I will explain it to you as we move on. So here's a full code with the swap helper function. So in the initialization, I created x and y. And what we are doing this is we're essentially just creating a block called x and it's pointing to 5 and we have y and it is 10. And we mentioned before that every single data type, well every single variable, um, has an address that's associated to. So if we want to get the address of x, well we simply just type the address symbol. So that's how we get the address. And the same thing applies for y as well. And from the address of x, we can also get what address of x is pointed to. So if you want to get 5 from address of x, we need to put a dereference symbol in front of it, or the star. So now let's talk about how we're calling the helper function. So we're passing in address of x and address of y. And now if we look at the helper function, we're taking into pointers. And we're calling into pointers a and b. So essentially what that does is now address of x, now we're just simply calling them a, and address of y, we're calling them b. So now, in order to get from a to 5, well, what we have to do is we just have to put the dereference symbol in front of it. Once we do that, we can get 5. And the same thing applies for address of y as well, um, b. So if you want to go from b to 10, well, we need to put the dereference symbol in front of it. So now let's talk about the initialization of the temp variable. So temp is an integer type, so it's a yellow block. And we initialize temp to be the dereference of a. So remember, dereference of a is equal to 5. So we get that from here. So temp is equal to dereference of a, where dereference of a, dereference of a is equal to 5. Now let's talk about this line right here. So d reference a is equal to the d reference of b. So what that means is we are setting d reference of a what d reference of b is. So remember, d reference of b is 10. So therefore, d reference of a has to be equal to 10, which means x is now 10. Let's go to the next line. So this time, well, I have the reference of b equal to temp. So remember, temp is equal to 5. So the reference of b, instead of equal to 10, is now equal to 5. And if this is equal to 5, then that means y is also equal to 5. So now, as you can see, we have successfully swapped what these variables are pointing to. So now, Instead of x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 10, we have x equal to 10 and y equal to 5. Let's talk about some unique feature about C language. Unlike other language, um, in C, you can dynamically memory allocate. So what that means is you can tell the computer, I want this amount of space in memory. But in other languages, they just automatically do it for you. In C, there are two ways that we can go about this. One is malloc and the other one's calc. And let's go over each one of them. malloc stands for memory allocation, and it is used to allocate specified number of bytes of memory. And after we do malloc, it returns a pointer to the very first block that we allocated. And the contents of the allocated memory are initialized to be garbage values. So whatever it was there, those will be our initial values. And we commonly use malloc 
uh, to allocate space for array, strings, or structs. Um, we're going to talk about structs later on, so don't worry about it. We're just, just going to skip that for now. Next, let's talk about calloc. Calloc means contiguous allocation, and it allocates memory for an array of elements, each of specified size. So it does the same thing as malloc. However, this is the key difference. In malloc, when we make space for those blocks, they're initialized to be garbage values. But in calloc, they're initialized to be zeros. And calloc, similar to malloc, it returns a pointer to the, to the very first memory block. And it is very useful when you want to initialize everything to be zero to start off. Now, let's look at some examples of malloc. On the left side, I have a code. On the right side, I have the memory grid. And let's go line by line. And once we go through this, I hope it will make further sense. So first, we are declaring a variable called r. And it's an int pointer variable. So we are taking four bytes of memory. Next, uh, we initialize a variable called size. And this is int type. So int type takes four bytes. So we're also allocating four bytes of memory somewhere in the grid. Next is the malloc. Within the malloc, you see size times size of int. Size of int is four. And size is two, so two times four gives us eight. So what this means is we're telling the computer that we want eight bytes of memory somewhere in the grid. And whenever the computer gives us the memory, they're all adjacent to each other. And it will give us the int pointer. Next, I have r set equal to our dynamically memory allocated space. So as you can see on the screen, r is now pointed to the green space, so which is the space that we just allocated. And after that, I have a if statement just to check if the memory allocation did work successfully. So next, uh, I made a for loop. So what this does is now we are traversing the newly allocated space. So because we malloced, okay, this will print out uh, garbage values that we didn't even initialize. In the for loop, it printed out 356. So what that means is the very first index was initialized to be 356. And now we are entering the for loop again, and this time it's going to print out the second index. And the second index happens to be minus 25. Next, we are freeing it. So this step is really important because if we do not free it, it will lead to memory leak. And what memory leak does is after we finish the program, that space of memory will continue to be there. And in future programs, that space is always taken by something else. So our computer will no longer have access to that memory block. So what this might lead to is your computer or your processor uh, will behave slower than before. So we have to free this after we're done. So simply to do it, we type free, and inside we type the pointer. This time, let's talk about calc. As I mentioned before, calc is really similar to malloc. The only difference between calc and malloc is that we are initializing the blocks to be zero. So this code right here is exactly the same as malloc, except instead of malloc, I just called it calc. So all the memory grid blocks, all the point, all the arrows, and all the blocks are all the same, except uh, within the for loop, it printed out zero and zero. Before we talk about reallocation, let's talk about Python. In Python, lists are very dynamic. So what I mean by that is, if you want to add a new thing to the list, well, all you have to call is the append function. In C, it doesn't work like that. And see, what we have to do is we need to manually change the size of the array. So let's go over. Realloc means reallocate, and it is used to resize previously called memory block. So allocated memory block means malloc and calloc. And then it takes a pointer to the old memory block, the new size, 
and returns a pointer to the resize memory block. And the contents of the new memory may be initialized or copied from the old block, depending on the situation. Let's go over some examples. So on the left side, we have the code again, the right side is the memory grid. And I've already skipped a couple steps because we've done this before. And this time, instead of doing int, uh, we're going to talk about short pointers. So the orange block is the short pointer called R. And remember, even though it's short, the pointer variable still takes four bytes. And we created a variable called size, and it's a short type. So it takes two blocks. And the green block, well, size is equal to two, and size is short is two, so two times two gives us four. So it will give us four blocks of memory, and R is now pointed to the green blocks. Now, let's talk about this further. Let's look after the if statement. So size is now four, and within the reallocate function, I have size times size of short. So size of short is two, and size is four. So four times two gives us eight. And R is now pointed to our expanded memory block. After I have an if statement, just to double check that memory allocation did work successfully. And now after using it, we are going to free it. So what free does is the same as before. We are freeing the space that we've allocated. And if we do not do this, well, it will lead to memory leaks again. Now that I introduced you about memory leaks through memory allocation, I want to introduce you a debugging tool that you can use to prevent memory leaks. And this is about Valgrind. Valgrind is an open source tool that is widely available and it is mainly used within C and C++, and there's some other languages that we can use Valgrind for. And we mainly use Valgrind um, to help us find memory leaks. I want to show you how to use Valgrind. On the right, I have the code. On the left, I have the terminal. And within the code, I made two short pointer variables called pnum and ptunum. Below that, I've allocated some memory. pnum points to a memory, memory blocks of six bytes, and p2num points to memory blocks of eight bytes. Below that, I've done some things, and it's not really needed, and then I've also printed out the statement called, our program is perfect. And below that, I've commented out the free, because I want to show you the memory leaks on purpose. So on the left, um, you guys are used to this. I, have the, I call the GCC, I call the flags that we always call, and then I'm about to run the output file. And then if we run this, it says our program is perfect. So to check out the memory leaks, we type valgrind and the output file called leaked. And now we run this. The first part is about the introduction of valgrind and we can kind of ignore that for now. And then we have to start looking from heap summary. So heap summary says we have 14 bytes in two blocks by the time of exit. So we haven't freed them yet. We haven't freed 14 bytes. So based on this, it doesn't tell us where that leak is happening. It's just telling us the summary, what happened in the end. So now let me teach you how to run Valgrind properly. So to run Valgrind properly, what we have to do is we need to do gcc wall std and dash o, and we need to call two extra flags. One is dash g, and the other one is dash capital O g. And what these flags do is that we are now able to tell where these leaks are happening. And now, when we run Valgrind, do not just type Valgrind and the alpha file, but try to add this settings. So it's the dash dash leak dash check equals four. And now we run this again. After running Valgrind, we now see the summary again. So the beginning part is very similar to what we've seen before. 
And if we look at the heap summary, it is also exactly the same as before. Now, below that, it tells us where we are losing memory. So if we check the very first one, it says we are losing six bytes in one block. That's just one of them. And the other one, we are losing eight bytes of memory. So where are these six and eight bytes are happening? Well, they said that the loss of six bytes of memory is happening at line number 10. So if you look at line number 10, as you can see, we have allocated some space. So we've allocated size of short times three, that's six. So that's where that whole six bytes of memory comes from. If we look at the one where we are losing eight bytes of memory, well, it is happening at line number 11. If you look at line number 11, we have four times size of short. And four times size of short is eight. So that's where we are losing eight bytes of memory. So now what we have to do is we need to go back to the code and fix everything. So we cleared out the screen and we commented out the freeze. So now they're in the code. And then I ran GCC with all the flags that we know of, including dash G and dash capital O G. And before we run Valgrind, I want to run the code to see if it works or not. So it says our program is perfect, but that's not the important part. We want to check if we have any memory leaks. So we run Valgrind. Dash dash leak, dash check equals full is also included. And once we run this, as usual, we see the introduction to Valgrind. And if we look at the heap summary, it says we have zero bytes in zero blocks by the time of exit. And the total heap usage says we have three allocations and three frees. And it says everything were freed and no leaks are possible. So this is how you use Valgrind properly. And I hope this can help you to find all the memory leaks in your code.